If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. This original bedtime story is made possible thanks to Slumberland patrons. If you would like to support this channel, you can find Patreon details in the description and on my channel homepage. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sound of my voice or to the spaces between my words. And as you comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell this sleep story in the background. And this is a sleep story about an astronaut known as Wild Rose. And she got that name, Wild Rose, because of some of the risks that she takes, that she'd been in some situations while being an astronaut where to save the crew. She had taken some risks putting herself in danger. And this spaceship had been traveling for many years. And it had been traveling at an incredibly high speed in the direction of a distant star. And because of the way that space travel works, the crew knew that at the speed they were going, they were aging so much slower than those they'd left behind on Earth. That they knew that they were unlikely to be able to see those on Earth again. And they set out on this mission, aware of this fact, but excited to be going out exploring. Rose often thought about those old science fiction shows. Science fiction shows like Star Wars, and Star Trek, and Babylon 5, where seemingly people could just travel around and see each other, and although journeys often took hours, sometimes even days, to get from one star system to another, they would arrive from place to place, And it would be as if just the allotted time had passed. And no one would ever really question the fact that in reality, if ships travelled as fast as they did, then the time for those on the ships would be different to the time for those off the ships. If this wasn't the case, it would have created many paradoxes, which were never really explored in these shows. And they've been travelling as a community for many years. And they had worked out decades earlier, that there seemed to be life on one of the planets around the star, and that that life appeared to be showing signs of technology. And they didn't know what level of technology, and they didn't know how that level of technology will change by the time they make it 
to the star. And they were all curious whether they would be detected as they arrive at the star. They're traveling at a speed which would be beyond the escape velocity for an inert asteroid or comet within a star system. So if they were detected, it would be known that they came from outside that star system, that they weren't just a comet or an asteroid on the outer reaches of their solar system. The angle that they'll be arriving would imply that they're coming from outside the solar system. But their entire journey, for most of the journey, is at a steady speed. It's only the last part of the journey where they slow down, they fire thrusters, where they flip over their spacecraft and the engine fires in the opposite direction. And they slow themselves down over the last quarter of the journey to a speed that will allow them to go into an orbit around the star. And that orbit will allow them to be able to monitor the planet and those on the planet that they wish to monitor, to see what the situation is on the planet. They will launch satellites and they'll be in the same orbit as the planet sitting in one of the planet's Lagrange points, where the gravity evens itself out and they can just sit there with minimal effort, following that planet. They can be in such a location that they can remain undetected once in that location, but they're curious whether they'll be detected on their approach to the solar system, whether they'll be detected suddenly slowing down sharply, and if they are detected suddenly slowing down sharply, that would be a sign that something is different about that object travelling through space. Because an object travelling through space wouldn't suddenly start to sharply slow down from an incredibly high speed. And the speed that they were travelling is a speed that's way beyond what is likely for just a random rock in space. that it would take a significant astronomical event to create a rock in space travelling at the speed they'll be approaching at. And when they slow down sharply, if they're being monitored, although once they enter their orbital position, they'll be out of view of the planet. It could be suspicious to anyone observing at that time that the ship, or as they would see it, the object, whatever it happens to be, suddenly seems to disappear, doesn't appear from behind their star. 
that as it was heading behind the star, it was still slowing to the point where it's traveling on the same plane as the planet. and keeping itself directly behind the star so that wherever the planet is it's always blocked by the star but they're relatively confident that even if a civilization was advanced enough by that point to detect them coming to detect when they start to slow down that that is an unusual thing to happen to analyze this and all the data and gather more data to try and work out what's happening before instantly concluding aliens to then realize that it appears to be something unnatural and to then try to work out the trajectory of this object. And only after doing all this, and probably after many years, finally getting around to starting to discuss launching something to take a closer look, or turning specific satellites and telescopes in space to face the object and the chances are the object wouldn't resolve very well until it is much much closer given that relatively speaking in space the ship is small so they were confident that they would be able to tuck that ship behind the star out the sight of the planet and they would have a little while before anyone comes around to investigate and sees what's tucked behind the star and that they know what they're doing so they're more prepared and they'll be sending out satellites and telescopes sending them out to different Lagrange points off diagonally between the planet and the ship. And then they'll be sending satellites that will move closer to the planet and will go into orbit around the planet. And the satellites in orbit around the planet will just be small satellites, no bigger than a head and some arms. And they'll just circle the planet, gathering data. They'll be beaming the data away from the planet towards the satellites in the Lagrange points. And from there, those satellites can beam the data behind the star to the ship. So they will be well organized and able to do this. And they'll be able to gather data and leave this star system long before anyone manages to come and investigate. And so, on arrival at the star system, they navigate and tuck the ship behind the star. And the ship then just freely maintains its orbit with just the occasional adjustment needing to be made. And they send out their probes. And the satellite heads to a Lagrange point in front of the ship, around the orbit 
and another heads out to behind the ship. And then small satellites head out from those larger satellites. And they head to the planet and start to circle the planet and gathering information, scanning the surface. gathering information about the atmosphere, intercepting any transmissions coming from the surface, taking high quality, high detail photos of the surface of the planet, with a resolution down to just 30 centimetres or so, so that they can see in detail what's going on on the planet. And every 90 minutes or so, each satellite completes a full orbit of the planet, scanning its surface. And the satellites head in slightly different orbits, so that between them, they can scan the whole planet and then rescan over and over again every 90 minutes, updating the images coming back. And they have more probes they can use if needed, if there's something specific they want to check out. And they also have a small lander that they can launch that's capable of launching off of a planet like this and heading back into space. And it's capable of landing on a planet like this. So if they really need to, they can go and investigate. But the plan is to avoid detection And around this planet are two small moons. And those moons are uneven and look more like captured asteroids. They're small enough that they haven't formed spheres. And the probes scan the planet. They scan the atmosphere. They detect the life that's here, a wide variety of life, of plants, of animals. That there are differences to back on Earth. But at the same time, there's a level of similarity that life here seems to have filled the various niches in the same way that life on Earth has. And with the resolution of the cameras, as the images start to quickly come in, they can see in quite good detail the different life that's down there. And they notice large cities. That it looks like it's a reasonably advanced civilization. And they detect thousands of other satellites in orbit. But the satellites aren't highly advanced. Most of them just have very basic abilities to manoeuvre, just to alter their orbits slightly. Perhaps to just keep them in orbit, and to allow them to fall from orbit in a controlled way. And Rose noted to herself that this civilization was like a 21st century Earth civilization. 
that it was still in the early stages of exploring space. It hadn't yet worked out how to overcome some of the bigger challenges that was still far too expensive for it to easily do at that period of time. And the information came in thick and fast of footage of the surface of the planet. And it was decided by Rose and some of the other crew that they should get the shuttle having seen what the planet's like and maybe go down and investigate. And they'd had the plan that they wouldn't interfere. They wouldn't want to scare this civilization. But they would go down and just observe and just watch from a distance. And so they launch from the main ship. And they head round the direction the ship was going, just adding a little acceleration, coming out from behind the star, following the orbit of the planet. And as they arrive at the planet, so they make a subtle adjustment to head against the planet's spin, to then use the planet's spin to slow them down as they go into orbit around that planet, slowing down a little more with each orbit against the rotation of the planet before heading down to a landing site seemingly well away from any built up area and Rose thinks to herself of all those old stories of UFOs that people used to tell of alien encounters and yet despite all those old stories. No aliens, no solid evidence of aliens had ever been found on Earth. And so she said to the crew, let's make sure we're not the first solid evidence of aliens found here. That we need to land safely and explore secretly, and just observe from a distance, and take notes on the culture, record their interactions, record their communication, how they talk to each other, what the dominant species here sounds like. And they land the ship. And the ship auto cloaks using advanced nanotechnology that allows each nanoparticle on the surface of the ship to adapt to the surroundings, to be monitoring the surroundings and making it so that any nanoparticle is almost showing a projection of what the nanoparticle directly opposite in any given direction is seeing, with each nanoparticle having almost a spherical front to it that projects very subtle differences in image from other nanoparticles on the opposite side, so that if someone walked around this ship, what they would see would shift and change. And unless they were highly observant 
and paying a lot of attention, they wouldn't notice that there was a ship there. And then a little moment after the ship has landed and the nanoparticles cloak the ship. Cooling happens across the surface of the ship because some parts of the ship were warmer and exposed heat. And so cooling happened to make the ship from the outside match the ambient temperature of the surroundings. And then a few of the crew left the ship wearing nano camouflage suits. And on the inside of the suit is projected a 3D image of the surroundings. And so they feel like they're walking around in the surroundings outside of a suit. And yet the suit is totally enclosed. And the only evidence that they are there are the footprints they leave behind as they walk. And they walk quietly, scanning and exploring. And eventually head nearer to a built up area. And they record some conversations the aliens are having. And they record video of interactions. And they notice the way that these advanced aliens seem a lot like humans used to seem at the same kind of level of technology. That they seem to have their own cultures. Many still seem to hold on to various supernatural beliefs and superstitions as ways of explaining and understanding the world. And some appeared to be very paranoid about the world, while others appeared ambivalent, and some almost like they didn't even care about the world and what was happening, and seemed to lack curiosity And after observing for a while, they headed back to their ship. They took off from the ground. They launched up into the sky. Then as they neared the top of the planet's atmosphere, they kicked in some boosters, thrusting them out of the planet's atmosphere and into space. They followed the planet's rotation, encircling the planet a handful of times, increasing the speed of their craft. before launching off around the star back to the main ship. And they arrived back at the main ship with a wealth of data. They were pleased that they hadn't been seen and that if they had been seen it would be so fleeting that the chances are no one would have got a good picture or any good solid evidence. But over a period of time, while they continued to monitor this planet, and they continued to monitor the rest of the solar system here, to see what else is around, to see how far 
this civilization had spread throughout their own solar system with perhaps probes to different planets and moons and asteroids. They're in orbit, out of sight of the planet for some time. But as they continued in orbit, they noticed that a ship had launched from the planet. And that ship went into orbit around the planet. And a probe came from the ship. And thrusters on that probe sent it in a trajectory looking like it was going to investigate their ship. And so, at this point, they didn't want to be discovered. They didn't want to ruin the progress of this civilization, allowing them to make their natural progress. So in the time it took for that probe to travel around, to work its way to their main ship, they drew back their probes from around the planet. They drew back their probes from the Lagrange points. They then changed direction and almost in a spiral away from the star, they began to accelerate, heading at an angle that would be difficult to be noticed, accelerating out of this star system, plotting in the next location to investigate, and so they know they'll be accelerating to a high percentage of the speed of light away from that star system in the direction of a new star to investigate, which they'll arrive at in about ten years' time. And during that journey, they'll look over all the information what they've learned from the information. They'll analyze all that data. And although they don't know what's going on back on Earth where they set off from, they'll beam all that information back in the direction of Earth in a powerful beam of data, knowing that to Earth Many hundreds and hundreds of years have passed since they left, although just a couple of decades will have passed for them. So they don't know if anyone does anything with that data when it arrives. But they continue to explore new places and between locations the community on the spaceship analyzes the data, processes that data, and catalogues all that they're learning. And on board the ship, they have a series of data arcs. And from time to time, they load one of those arcs up with all the information they've gained and they drop it from the ship and it floats in space with a clear pulse that continues, that's powerful and that can continue for millions of years so that anyone with the technology could find that data arc and find how to access the data contained within it 
knowing everything that they had learned up to that point. And that the data arc also reveals the root that at that point the ship was continuing on and reveals that it will continue to drop these data arcs as it travels on its journeys, always keeping the data arcs on board, fully up to date with all the latest knowledge. And those data arcs are designed to be almost indestructible. So if anything ever happens to the ship and the ship is destroyed, the data arcs will survive and activate and be floating through space for others to find. And these data arcs beams are so powerful that in certain frequencies, they stand out incredibly bright if you scan the night sky. And so they continue their journey. And each night, Wild Rose settles down in her cabin, enjoying this incredible life of exploration and discovery and how busy she will now be analysing so much data during the trip while also planning and scanning to try and work out as much as possible about where they're going before they get there. and knowing that they're leaving behind a legacy for others to discover as they become spacefaring. And she drifts and floats so peacefully, so comfortably asleep. <laughs> 